welcome to this very special reading that may have the sound of my son in the background, but hopefully it's not too distracting. I have been feeling a calling to do this reading for a minute, but it became very urgent today. This reading is an urgent message for someone or some ones from the Orisha. Now, if you're not familiar with the Orisha, that's fine. And you were drawn here. It still means that there may be a message here for you. Okay. And what that can also entail is that maybe you need to do some research on the deities or the um, slash Orisha of the Yoruba Santeria faith. So I'm going to get right into it. Each pile has its own fortune cookie, a crystal, and a card for you to choose from. All right, I'm not going to read the word of the card. Words on the card, I want you to choose by either the number, the crystal, or the artwork that you are drawn to. All right, so for pound the one, let me cover it up. This is your card. So if you feel drawn to this card, then your message is in power one and, or I mean the crystal citrine. Power number two, you have this card. So if you feel drawn to this card, then your message is in power two. And this golden healing quartz crystal. Raw quartz. And for power three, I have to cover up more than just the words with power three. So if you were drawn to this photo or artwork, and or this crystal, which is blue evil eye protection agate, then your message is in pile three. So let's take in a deep breath together. Exhale, letting go of any stress, any tension, any worries, and whichever number, artwork, or crystal calls to you immediately, that is where you go. This is not one of those readings where I feel like you will have more than one pile, but perhaps it could be. You're either going to have all of them or one of them. So go as you guide it is my suggestion. And on that note, I'll be back with pile number one. Hey, welcome to pile number one. First, before I get into it, you were drawn to big, bold vision. This card will be read last, along with an extra card that will not be shown until the end of your reading. So I put the cards for advice to the side for now. You were also drawn to this citrine crystal. So there is something, a uh, message here that has to do with your happiness or with your prosperity. And let's see what your fortune cookie says. So your fortune says hardly anyone knows how much is gained by ignoring the future. And that is a very good point. So maybe um, you're worried a lot about your future. You're worried a lot about what is coming in for you. And um, Spirit is letting you know that by you paying attention to what is to come, you're not living in the present. And you can gain so much more by not even thinking about the future and living in the now. 
All right, so let's see. First off, is there a warning or something you need to look out for this week? So I have the magician. have the nine of wands sorry they put the lettering so tiny on these cards these are my orisha tarot you have the nine of swords and you have the hermit <laughs> hmm so um my pal ones you are getting a little bit of a warning here that um You've been working very hard. You've been doing a lot of work. Um, I am getting a warning that there are forces working against you. Now, that could be other people doing black magic, or it could be you working against yourself because your mindset is already thinking negatively. Because with the Nine of Swords here, it shows me that you've already been worried. You've already been stressed out. And, and worried that something or someone or so, something's out to get you. And um, this person, it almost looks like the swords are raining down on them and one landed right in front of their door. So it's almost like you having these fears that are becoming a reality because it's where your mind is. It's your mindset. You're drawing in your fears. So if you're worried about haters, you're attracting them by worrying about them. If you are worrying about your future, you are attracting um, more things to worry about when it comes to your future. With the hermit coming through here, I do see a spiritual work for you, um, a need to retreat. So I feel like their warning they're giving to you is that there's a need for you to pull your energy back in some way, retreat, replenish your energy. Um, you've done a lot of work, but now it's time for you to clear your head, clear your mind, clear your vibe, your uh, energy completely. There are, you know, uh, people, it does feel like there's people that may be not wishing you well, and you may need to protect your energy from them. And then for some of you, it is your mindset that is detrimental at this time. And you have to watch what you are thinking. Okay, because you're calling it in. All right. So let's see. A lesson that they are proud you learned they being your Orisha guides, your deities that walk with you. So you have, oh yeah, why when I was doing these cards, I knew she was going to come through. When I first started shuffling the decks to make the piles, she was at the bottom of the deck. And I said, I know you're going to be in this reading somewhere. Boom, she's in pile one. Oh yeah, storms. They are very proud because you have made it through a lot of tumultuous times. And um, what pulled you through was your faith, your strength, and your courage. And they're very proud of you for that. Harnessing this powerful energy, um, being able to accept change um, with grace, and knowing that storms pass. And at times, being the storm when you had to be, when you had to shake things up and knock things down so that something new could be rebuilt. And they're very proud of you for this strength and this courage that you have had. Um, they're also very proud of, uh, okay, you got Queen Mother Nani coming through. Liberation. You have freed yourself in a way from something that used to keep you trapped. So maybe um, they're warning you that maybe you're falling into old patterns of uh, mind your mindset, letting you yourself overthink things rather than getting a feeling and going with the feeling. Um, it's like you're thinking, thinking so much, you're missing opportunities, or you are just 
never moving forward because you're so busy in your head. Um, you've also freed yourself from, it feels like, attachments and codependency with people. And even with, um, for some of you, with career, maybe you've decided to become an entrepreneur, do your own thing. But there's something about you freeing yourself to speak and, and stand in your authentic truth that they're very proud of. Okay. What else do we have here? Okay. The next challenge or lesson coming in, what needs to heal? see them here okay it says your life plan is unfolding as it should so the next thing you're going to realize is that everything is falling right into place perhaps this week you will see Things that would de are destined for you coming in or things you dreamed of and visualized manifesting. The plan you have for your life that you're co-creating with the divine is unfolding as it should. So what needs to heal? Perhaps you're worried that you're not on the right path or you're worried that, you know, something's going to go wrong. But um, they're saying Pretty much everything is, is is straight. So you're meant to have a voice in this world. That's why you were called here to this reading today. What do you need to do to be ready for your life purpose that you can do this week? We have bright heart light, open connections. So you can begin to work on some heart chakra clearing and start connecting to your guides visualizations uh, that I lead, I do uh, some, and they, they are on YouTube, some of them in your ancestors speak, where uh, you can uh, visualize opening up your heart to receive love from your guides and your ancestors. But they're asking you at this time to open up your connection to them. That is what will help you at this time with your life purpose. You also have idyllic, I might be saying this wrong. Idyllic, idyllic, or idyllic. <laughs> and I'm an English major from LIU. I, I hate pronoun not knowing how to pronounce something. But idyllic or idyllic times. And it says the garden and paradise. So it's almost like saying be prepared for goodness. Be prepared for great things that are coming in. There is something amazing coming. I feel like an environment switch for some of you. You may be moving someplace that feels more like paradise to you. Maybe some of you want a garden. Um, I see you getting that. I just see them telling, um, wanting you to be ready for wonderful, beautiful times that are ahead. Okay. And you have abundance, fortune, wealth, plenty. Wow. So if this ain't some great things to get ready for, <laughs> these are the things you need to be in a mindset of abundance this week. And as long as you are in the energy of abundance, you are going to attract it this week. OK, and from your advice cards, you have the big, bold vision. First off, this means you have a very big vision for something you would like to do or or bring into fruition in this world and at this time they want you to know you're being guided to manifest it do not be afraid have courage stand in your truth do not let anyone make you change your um, vision from what it is the vision you have is one that is in sync with your higher purpose and it will manifest and it's a big vision it's a big goal. So think of your greatest goal, your greatest dream. And this card right here is a light worker card because it's usually something that you want to do in service to the world in some way um, or in service to people and humanity or animals. Whatever it is, you're being beckoned at this time by your Orisha guides to do it. OK, and let's see what this other message is. The world wants to be written. So pretty much just saying, open up 
and create. Okay? Open up and create. Whatever it is you've experienced, it has brought a huge transformation in you. And you were meant to use these experiences and share them in some way, shape, or form. So I do feel like what you've gone through that has changed you, that has broken you, that has made you whole again, this is the stuff the word wants to be written. And I said the world. The word wants to be written. These are the things that you need to either write in books, you need to share um, through speaking on various platforms, or um, just share it within a certain community. But there's something about your experiences that are very important. You see how she goes from these tears to this bold and beautiful energy. And this is what they are advising you to do. And this is the message I have for you today from your Orisha guys. I hope this helped you in some way, shape, or form. If it resonated, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love to see what you guys got from the sessions. Read the description for other ways that we could bond and work together. Think about joining my workshop community. That's the best way to connect with me. And sending you so much light and love, peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. I'll be back with pile number two. Later. Pile two. So you were drawn to. She feels. She knows. Deep card. That's a part of your advice. And this as well as the mystery advice card. I read those last. Let's see if your fortune cookie wants to let you know. But I will tell you your attraction to the crystal, the golden healing quartz crystal. Let's me know that your Orisha are here either because they want you to be aware of some healing that you need or they want you to be aware of a healing process or cycle that has come to an end. I do feel that you've completed something. Okay. So your fortune says, oops, wrong side. <laughs> How about another fortune? It says, love is a warm fire to keep the soul warm. Mm. Maybe you're healing or you have healed from some love um, damage that might have been done to you. But I do see you having healed if they're mentioning that love is the fire that keeps, is the warm fire to keep the soul warm, then I get the feeling that you are experiencing that. And if you're not, then they're letting you know that that is where your energy should be. Love. All right. So let's take a look and see. Is there a warning or something you need to look out for this week? You have the Wheel of Fortune. You have the High Priestess. You have the Lovers. Wow, these piles are always so in sync. <laughs> and you have the two of disc which is the two of pentacles so my pile twos uh what you need to look out for this week is a flip in karmic energy it feels like you are coming from a space of lack of of not having and moving into an energy of having a lot some of you here do read or are into it. Maybe you need to think about getting in my course, get into it if you're not, because you have the ability to intuitively know things. And there's some kind of intuitive hit you're going to get this week that is going to cause you to have to make a choice between two things. It's going to be either uh, two careers and you're going to have to choose one or two lovers. 
Either way, it's going to have something to do with two things you love or you value, and you're going to have to choose between them. I do see, um, for some of you, it has to do with creative arts. For others of you, it has to do with uh, relationships that need to be severed completely. But I do see a shift karma-wise, meaning you've done some karmic clearing. Some cycle has come to an end. And now there's something about your intuition that is guiding you towards what is calling to your heart. That could be a lover that matches your heart. It's calling or a career or both. Whatever the case may be, either you're going to have to get it into balance this week or you're going to end up having to choose one or the other. Okay, that's a heads up. So a lesson that they want you to know they're proud that you have learned is we have Sekhmet coming through, Wounded Healer. So you have not only taken the time to learn different tools and techniques to self-heal, but you've also decided or un, un, without realizing it, unconsciously have been a healer to others and or maybe to the planet in general. But um, they're very proud about the fact that you have gone through some stuff and you've come out still wanting to help people, still loving people, still being this regal royal energy. Whatever you went through did not make you. And that is something they're proud of. You also have Nana Buluku coming through and this is, she represents seasons. And they're very proud about how you adapt. Perhaps you've been thrown into situations you've never been in before. Perhaps you've been thrown into environments that just weren't comfortable. But you have been able to adapt. You have been able to um, go through cycles and complete them like this wheel. You have been able to be at the bottom of the wheel and thrive and get to the top where you are now. And um, they're very proud of, the, of your ability to accept the things you cannot change and change the things you can. Interesting. Okay. So your next challenge or lesson that's coming in, what else needs to heal? True love can never really be lost. Wow. This whole pile was about, it uh, feels like something you love. So what needs to heal at this time or what you're going to need to heal is the loss of something you truly love. And it could be um, maybe you're still mourning a passed on loved one. Maybe you will mourn whatever it is you have to release. Maybe it's an ex um, or someone you have children with, you have to part with. Maybe it's a career you've been with since you were very young. Um, whatever the case may be, they want you to, to realize that true love can never really be lost. So whatever is truly connected to you through love will always be connected to you through love. And so do not worry about the things you have to let go of is what I feel the message is here. All righty. So you're meant to have a voice in this world. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been drawn to this reading today. What do you need to do to be ready for your life purpose this week? harvest, gathering of blessings. So you need to start realizing the things that you already have. This week, look at the things that you are grateful for, list them, talk about them, and be in a state of gratitude. But also be ready to receive is what I'm hearing. You have to be in an energy of harvest time, of realizing the things I've worked for, I'm reaping what I've sown. And be open to receive. That's something I feel with this pal here. Maybe you have issues with receiving, like even compliments. Um, and they're telling you, get ready into the energy of gathering your blessings because they're coming in this week. You also have sacred action, decisive focus. So they're advising you this week to take action when you feel necessary. When it has, when it's in alignment with your goals, with your vision, 
take action. Sacred action to me is when you're more guided into action, divinely guided rather than just responding and reacting. You're actually feeling guided to do something. And this week, they want you to be ready for this to happen because you're going to get some epiphanies. You're going to get some um, nudges to do or make moves and be ready for that. Okay. Interesting that you have Sekhmet here and then you have the cat on the head there. So you definitely have a lot of cat energy around you. Um, and then you got wolves. Summoning power, instinct, intellect, and, and control. So this week, they want you to really start to harness your gifts. You have high priestess here. There's a need for you to connect to the lunar cycles if you haven't been. There's a full moon coming in on the 31st. But they want you to really start to hone in on your gifts and calling them in instinctually they'll start to just activate but you will know when to use them and when to you know chill out so this week they want you to be ready to summon in and call in your power and stand in your light and not be afraid to show your power and your intellect okay and your advice card here, she feels she knows, is someone who has gone through a lot of stuff and she most, more than can, um, can understand experiences others have gone through, but she feels it. She's an empath. She can feel what the world is experiencing or what people are going through. And um, that is a part of your purpose. The Orisha are really beckoning you to put what you feel into your artwork or into your creative work or into um, your work in some way or maybe in your family life. But it just, I just get an energy that your nurturing energy um, is really going to be called in this week. Okay, and you also have listening for truth this gives me hermit energy so they really are advising you to go within high priestess go within and listen and you will be given the answers learn how to tap in and activate that third eye get into alignment if you don't know how i'm not even gonna tell y'all again y'all know what to do but um you really need to quiet your mind and not listen to the outside world. Both of these cards are really more talking about being um, going within and not so much um, listening to what people are saying, but more so feeling what is what the vibe is and listening to spirit for direction. And that's what I have for you, my pal twos. I hope this resonated with you in some way. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I always welcome new light workers. Join one of my workshops so that we can bond more and connect and you can grow spiritually. All of that information is in the description. And on that note, I want to say peace, blessings, and all that good stuff that comes from being a part of my tribe. I'll be back with pal number three. Later. Hey, pal three, welcome to your reading. You were drawn to against the grain. This is a part of your advice, and so is this mystery advice card. And they go last over there. You're also drawn to this blue evil eye protection agate crystal here. Um, it's a really big one. I would have probably had it in my, you know, my bracelet in some way, shape, or form. But anyway, um, this lets me know that you're being called here um, to confirm that you're you you're protected. You are free. Um, maybe you've been feeling nervous about standing in your light or speaking your truth in some way, or just being your authentic self. But yeah, Orisha calling you here today to let you know you're safe, you're protected, be you, and that's the only way 
that you're going to uh, live out your life purpose. So let's see what the fortune cookie says. So your fortune cookie says... Demonstrate, that's nuts. I gotta turn on my light. Sorry off, there's a shadow. Demonstrate refinement in everything you do. Okay. So I do feel like there's a need for you to, or that you are someone that always is getting better, always fine tuning, polishing what it is that you do or your appearance or what you uh, offer or your uh, skill level. And um, don't stop. It does feel like maybe there are people who are jealous of you when you um, up level, but that ain't for you to worry about. So a warning or something that you need to look out for right now. So we have judgment. You have the moon. That's interesting because I thought this was the moon when I pulled it out. And then the moon's right under it anyway. <laughs> okay. We also have temperance. And the hero font. Or the hero font however they want to pronounce it. So what I feel they are warning you about or want you to look out for is that something's coming in this week. It's going to bring balance and harmony into your life. It almost feels like a new home or a new land or some kind of opportunity to build something new is going to occur this week. And it's going to bring like a balance, a harmonious energy in for you. But they're not revealing what it is. It feels like this full moon is going to be when you will be able to see exactly what that is. Um, or if you're watching this and it's after the one I'm talking about, then it's the next full moon when you will it will be revealed. All right. There's something you've been judged on, something that you have completed or accomplished or done uh, well and um because of that, there's some kind of surprise they're ushering in for you that's going to really bring some kind of harmony and balance into your life. Um, it's due to spiritual work you've done. And they also want you to know that you're meant to be a spiritual guide or leader of some kind with the hero font here. Okay. If you don't feel that way, then there is a need for you to join a spiritual community of some kind. Okay, so let's see. A lesson they're proud you learned. So you're Risha, proud that you learned sacred lust. Ketish. <laughs> oh, these nudie cards. Okay. It's the best I could do. Um... And you have Queen Nandi with intuition. The moon also has a lot to do with intuition and emotions, but it's really the unseen things that are beneath the surface. So I do feel that um, maybe you will get either increased intuitive uh, ability on the, that date of that next full moon, like your intuitive uh, gifts are going to expand or just something that's going to come into fruition. But they're very proud of how you have been able to um, tap into your inner knowing, use your intuition, trust, because using your intuition shows your guides that you trust the messages and the signals that they send to you, that you trust that they are guiding you along the path in the right direction and therefore you don't question you don't worry you don't second guess that is something that they're very proud of for you 
Um, with Sacred Lust, let me take a look at this. Because I'm not familiar with Kitesh. The mistress of the gods is the Egyptian goddess of sacred sexuality, ecstasy, and fertility. Her two men, yes, two, are the fertility god Men and Mantu, the god of war. That's interesting. I used to wish, I used to always say jokes like, yeah, I'm going to have me two husbands instead of, you know, the, you know, because in uh, some African cultures, in the, it really in the Muslim religion, not so much African culture, but Muslim religion, they believe in taking a certain, you know, more than one wife. So I used to always joke that I was going to do that with my husband. So this is interesting that there's actually a goddess that's connected to a place that's connected to my past lifetime and possibly yours as well. If you're getting this card, you may also have connections to ancient Egypt. So the message of this card is that you're an erotic creature. You have a divine right to experience sensual ecstasy. It's sacred to give and receive pleasure. So I do feel like maybe at one point you were very close to that. You weren't really um, into being intimate. I don't know. I feel like this is something that you had to overcome. Maybe being open and free with letting your naked body be seen, letting yourself be touched and, and or experiencing pleasure um, in ways that, you know, maybe you used to think were taboo. But they are noticing that you have started to understand the sacredness of intimacy. And for that reason, your experiences intimately are going to grow, just like your intuition. All right. So the next challenge or lesson coming in, what needs to heal for you at this time? Share the gift. Next challenge coming in for you is going to be teaching and using your gifts to help others. With share the gift, it makes me feel like you're meant to teach it in some way or you're meant to learn on how to activate your gifts so that you can share it with others by teaching or being in service to humanity or the world in some way. So it's very important to your Orisha that you eventually share your gifts. And I do feel you're someone who shares the love. This gives me love energy. You're someone who, when you get things in abundance, you're willing to give. You want to be able to give. And um, I feel that opportunity coming in for you. So my pal threes, you're meant to have a voice in this world because that's only those who are meant to shine in some kind of way are going to be drawn to this reading today or whenever you're seeing it. So I want to find out what you need to do to be ready for your life purpose that you can do this week. You have Divine Mother, Nurturing Compassion and Grace. You have Friendship. Support, fun, unity, and play. And you have wings of light, becoming something new. Wow, my pal threes. So, did you get a good look at that? So, the message I'm getting for you guys, as far as what you need to do to be ready for your life purpose, purpose this week, is to... Get into your, uh, uh, energy that it feels like is naturally you, a divine mothering energy. Whatever you are meant to do in this lifetime, it has to do with being compassionate for other people, nurturing other people, possibly even the earth. And look, we have the moon here, moon. This may be the sun and not the moon, but I just really feel moon energy with you, even with the moon here over her head. So uh, pay attention to the lunar cycles, but I am getting that uh, you need to be gentle with yourself and kind with yourself and mothering and compassionate with yourself. And also um, be open to new friendships coming in, new support, uh, ready to unite with people that maybe you wouldn't have normally worked with. Have fun and hang out with people you've never hung out with before. I see um, cultural expansion when it comes to friendships, um, travel, uh, and community. And with Wings of Light, you're changing. I don't know. Your, your whatever this judgment is, that this choice that's made here, or whatever judgment has been made upon you, it's 
pushing you into a whole new world, a whole new life. So you're being given like a boost to transform into something amazing. And they want you to be ready to be to be ready to be ready. Be ready beyond being ready to be ready. Be ready this week to transform. Be ready this week for a big change in how you deal with yourself and mother yourself, with how you mother and nurture others, um, your friendship bonds and a soul tribe that's being called in and um, also being able to release old ties that no longer serve a purpose and um, allowing things to transform, allowing your, your Orishas to help you become this hierophant, this spiritual leader or guide or guru that you are meant to be. And your advice we have with against the grain. Against, against the grain speaks of you not being for everyone. You're not meant to go in the same direction as other people. Anything that you want to do, it's going to end up being against the norm. You are someone who's meant to not do things traditionally, but to do them in your own way. And that's the only way that you are going to manifest the life you deserve. And your mystery advice card is trust yourself. You might as well. You're, you're a high priestess. You have intuition here. You have the moon coming through. So your intuition is on point. You're connected to the world. Look up all the animal spirit guides and transformative symbolism all around you. You're connected to the earth. You're connected to the nature. Be you. Trust yourself. You're being guided. You're being guided. I don't think there's anything else I could say to you, my pal threes, except... Give me a thumbs up if this resonated with you in any way. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I always welcome in new light workers. We love the light energy. We want to grow a huge million deep crew of light workers here online. So share these readings, share the channel, spread the word about the work we do here. Um, check my description for ways that you could further work with me. I feel like this pal, y'all need to be in my get into it with Amina workshop so that you can really fine tune that third eye and really, really get out there using some of my steam techniques to help other people and really serve your life purpose. That's my goal to help you light workers get clear, find direction and get there to serve your purpose on this earth. And also... The retreat deadline has been extended. So if you want to um, put down your deposit for Bonessa Retreat uh, 2024, you have till September 10th. And all of the information for how to do that is in the description as well. I'm sending y'all so much light and love. This was a great reading today. I hope y'all loved it too. Leave me a comment if you did. If you want more messages from the Orisha. Peace. Blessings. And may the Orisha bless you with all that good stuff. It comes from being a part of this light tribe. Bye.